from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. And good day to you. I'm Merrily Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, what's next in the online betting battle? A look at the DOJ's reversal of the 2011 Wire Act decision and what it means to Nevada and the gaming industry. And my guests today are Daryl Nuremberg and Robert Hollifield. They are counselors to the Coalition to Stop Internet Gambling and the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. Thanks both of you for being here today. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks for having Appreciate us. Appreciate it. In mid-January, the Department of Justice shocked the gambling community with the reversal of its opinion stating that the 1961 Federal Wire Act applies not only to online sports betting, but to all forms of online gambling as well. And today on Eye on Washington, we'll tell you what this change could mean to Nevada as well as the whole online gambling industry. We'll ask my guests why they believe the DOJ decision is good news for your family, the economy, and the criminal justice system, among other entities. And we'll learn what's next, legally and legislatively. In mid-2017, Eye on Washington reported on the effort to extend the Wire Act to include all online betting. That effort, which saw a victory with the DOJ announcement in January, was spearheaded by the Coalition to Stop Internet Gambling. The coalition was founded in 2013 by Las Vegas Sands Corporation founder, chairman, and chief executive officer Officer Sheldon Adelson. The five-year-long goal of the coalition has been just what occurred this winter, the ban of online betting, not just sports betting, which already is illegal, but all types of gambling. We're going to give you some Wire Act history later in the program, but for now, just know that in 2011, the Justice Department reversed a long-standing position that all forms of online gambling are illegal in the United States, and that opened the way for states to authorize non-sports betting online. January's news restores the original Wire Act, extending the ban to all forms of online gambling. And gentlemen, first of all, welcome to Eye on Washington. We're going to look at why you saw this decision as a victory sure. later on in the show. But for now, we, we need to clarify for our audience, you know, exactly what happened and its possible impact. Let me start with you, Mr. Nuremberg. Great. Thank you, Mary Lee, and thank you for having us on this show. Thank you. This was effectively a reboot. In 1961, Congress passed a law called the Wire Act, banning the use of telecommunications for any kind of gambling. In uh, 2006, Congress passed another law to enforce the 1961 law to ban all internet gaming. And then, as you'd mentioned, in 2011, in a legal opinion, DOJ reinterpreted the law and single-handedly opened up the door to internet gaming by saying, they are no longer going to enforce the Wire Act against any online casinos as long as they don't accept sports bets. What happened in January is DOJ released an opinion effectively reversing the 2011 opinion and restoring the Wire Act to where it always had been interpreted. Okay. And Mr. Hollifield, currently there are there are three U.S. states uh, that have launched online gambling operations. Uh, that, that's Nevada, Delaware, and New Jersey. And then Pennsylvania is, was in the process uh, of launching this year, and then six states have online uh, lottery sales, correct? So what uh, responses are you hearing early on from these entities? Well, there's a lot of confusion. I mean, people want to know what exactly this means. And um, at the outset, it means that we're, we're rebooting, as Mr. Nuremberg said. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why people of Nevada need to um, appreciate the decision. And um, part of it is this is just not how we make public policy. We don't allow the Department of Justice to uh, single-handedly make a decision. This is something that needs to be considered in Congress, and that's what's going to happen now. And so we're in a wait and see with the states. Um, so the debate will go 
go to the legislative bodies. Mr. Nuremberg, I, I, I want to back up a bit, several Please. years in fact, and remind my audience of one person's decision to take the lead in this huge battle, and, and that's a man named Sheldon Adelson. And, um, you know, for years he, he's led the effort. He built a team in Nevada here on Capitol Hill as well uh, in the hopes of bringing out exactly what we saw uh, with the DOG's January announcement. Uh, tell us more about how the, how the coalition uh, effort was launched, how this all came to be. Yes, thank you. Well, originally when this opinion came out, uh, the first thing we thought is, as Robert had stated, is that this is not the way to legislate. The idea of taking gaming from a defined physical location where it's tightly controlled and putting it on any one cell phone where it's available 24-7 is perhaps the biggest decision in gaming in our lifetimes. And as Robert had said, that is a decision that properly should be made by Congress. That was the first point. The second was, was that Internet gaming has the potential to prey on society's most vulnerable. Many of the protections that are available in a land-based casino to prevent people from getting into trouble and to keep kids out are not available online. So the issue became, this is something that if we're going to have across the country, it should be a decision for Congress, not a decision for a single DOJ attorney. So is this uh, why Mr. Adelson uh, got the coalition together to um begin the fight against this uh, this idea? Well, the key was is to restore the law, reboot, and then have Congress decide. And part of the decision is based on the potential not only for internet gaming to prey on society's most vulnerable, but it's also, as the FBI has stated, uniquely susceptible to criminal activity because of the anonymity of the internet and the mm -hmm. potential mm -hmm. it could be used for money laundering. And so uh, the idea is restore the law, enforce the law against the offshore unlicensed online sites, and then have Congress decide how to go forward, whether we should have internet gaming, and if so, under what conditions. All right, um, and when we return, why my guests consider the DOJ vic uh, decision a victory, not only for their coalition, but for families, the economy, and even the war on terrorism. We're gonna explain right after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce, brought to you by Caesars Entertainment, the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, the Las Vegas Sands Corporation, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, NV Energy, Jim Marsh Automotive and Body Shop, the Rogich Communications Group, and Renown Health. I have three tests next week. I'm going to be studying all weekend. Oh. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Oh yeah, that sounds good. What time? Um, I work until 6. Okay, sounds good. Just text me after. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. I got my own iPod Touch and used my dad's login to get on gambling sites. Poker is the best, but I'm losing a lot. Since I'm too young to play, they're not allowed to keep the money and my dad won't find out. That's right, isn't it? The skills you can develop in the Army National Guard can give you an edge in the high-tech job market of tomorrow. The Guard offers career training to take advantage of your interests in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Gain practical experience with emerging technology and equipment that you can transfer to an exciting new field. Get a head start on your career while serving part-time and earning money to pay for college. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about all of the STEM career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. 
and welcome back to Eye on Washington, our look at a recent DOJ decision stating that the Federal Wire Act applies to all forms of online gambling. My guests today are Daryl Nuremberg and Robert Holyfield. They are the counselors to the Coalition to Stop Internet Gambling and the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. So what is the main battle here? It seems to boil down to this. Is internet gambling a good bet? or a bad bet. Well, the Coalition to Stop Internet Gambling says its opposition to online betting stems from its belief that the activity is harmful in a multitude of ways. First, the group says it's harmful to children, that kids too easily can access parents' credit cards and place bets on home computers. Next, it could have ties to cybercrime. The Coalition says online gambling platforms make it easy for criminals to launder money thanks to anonymity payment options, and the difficulty in policing the large number of online casinos. Also, the group claims that online betting is a job killer, that it reduces jobs in brick-and-mortar casinos, as well as at jobs at casino-linked lodging, restaurants, entertainment venues, even construction, as fewer casinos are built. And, and Mr. Holyfield, you know, many would say that online betting is just a, a fun, harmless way to while away a few hours, uh, maybe even make a few dollars uh, in in. in in the, in the uh, transaction or what you're doing. And, but the coalition says uh, it's a dark place where kids, again, can too easily get a credit card, uh, they can too easily gamble, where cyber crooks dwell, where jobs and local revenue suffer. What do you guys say? Well, I believe all those things that you mentioned are true. I, I think um, I'd add one more. I'd, I'd say that states are uh, prone to think that they can raise capital for other projects on um, an effort to move online gambling mm -hmm. and um, and create a tax revenue stream there. We haven't seen that pan out either. But I believe it's you're exactly right. Whether you are a proponent of gambling or not, um, a casino following someone home just seems a bridge too far. Um, and I think the access on every phone in America um, is, is a step too far. For children, we know if you're a parent, um, children are incredibly technologically savvy. They'll find a way sure. to access online gaming, gaming. And additionally, what we also know is when it's an available online, the bad actors will make it easier to access them. So um, the folks that don't have people's best interests at heart aren't running a legitimate website, um, that's where the activity tends to tends to lead. Yeah, also, Mr. Nuremberg, I, I, I've seen reports claiming that uh, internet gambling exploits those already addicted to gambling. Is this overboard or are, those stu are there studies backing this up? Well, there are studies. In fact, uh, we found some advertisements run here in the United States on websites that are geared to, for people with gaming addictions to seek help advertisements for online casinos. Because mm. keep in mind that a big part of marketing online casinos is not done by the casino itself, but is rather done by affiliates mm. who will put ads on your web on web pages in the hopes that you'll click through. And so there are just a large number of affiliates out there who have the opportunity to advertise to individuals who have shown an interest in online gaming, whether it is a kid or someone with a gaming addiction or gambling problem. And, and Mr. Holyfield, as well, wasn't another of the coalition's points that uh, online uh, gambling uh, ostensibly isn't regulated for players? Um, uh, the industry itself is not regulated. Is that correct? Um, uh, others who've been on my show on this issue say regulation really is required for uh, games to be truly legal. Can you explain that? We, we definitely need a regulatory apparatus in place um, that uh, we, that mirrors what we have on the land base side. Um, it's worked effectively there. Um, as Mr. Nuremberg pointed out early on, um, we, we know how to regulate gaming in a casino. We, people present themselves in public, they come into a casino, we can monitor their behavior. We can tell if they're, um, if they're getting in over their heads and step in where appropriate. None of that exists online. And uh, those are the considerations that Congress needs to take into account and um, not the Department of Justice single-handedly. Okay. 
And when we return, some more history on the Wire Act, and later, what's next in this fight? We're going to tell you right after this. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. When you think RTC, what comes to mind? How about jobs? RTC road projects bring thousands of jobs to Washoe County, expanding and connecting Northern Nevada, growing our local economy, providing the more secure future for our residents and their families. So when you think jobs, think RTC. Your RTC, the RTC of Washoe County. Nothing mattered more than getting my fix. I was on the verge of being homeless. My house was being foreclosed on. It took everything that I had. Knowing that I did this to myself, that it could have been prevented, makes it worse. It just takes one. Planet Hollywood. Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time, and we always want you to leave feeling like you did. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. And welcome back to Eye on Washington and our update on an effort to ban online gambling. We've been visiting with Daryl Nirenberg and Robert Holyfield, counselors to the Coalition to Stop Internet Gambling and the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. So just what is the legislation at the center of all this controversy while the debate regarding the scope of the law? Well, here's some background for you. In 1961, Congress passed the Interstate Wire Act. It banned certain types of betting businesses and specifically addressed the use of a wire communication facility for the placing of wagers. Its original target was the Mafia's sports gambling operations that were being done by telephone across state lines and out of reach of state law enforcement. Then in 2006, the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act banned businesses from accepting credit cards and other payments in connection with internet betting. Next, in 2011, the Justice Department reversed a long-standing position that all forms of online gambling are illegal in the United States, opening the way for states to authorize non-sports betting online. So where are we now? Well, the DOJ announced January 15th that the U.S. online gambling market has been given 90 days to adjust to the opinion. The department reportedly called the 90-day delay, quote, an internal exercise of prosecutorial discretion intended to give affected operators time to modify their behavior to conform to the new opinion. Now, gentlemen, the DOJ did warn that the delay should not be interpreted as, quote, a safe harbor for violators. Does the coalition believe this is a done deal? Surely it'll be challenged in the courts. 
It may, but it's important to keep in mind that the law is very clear. The Wire Act was drafted and enacted to prevent the use of telecommunications for all forms of gambling, whether it was on sports, horses, or lotteries. The DOJ opinion in 2011 did not change the law, did not have the force of law. All it was was a statement by DOJ saying we were going to stop enforcing the law against any casino as long as the casino is not accepting sports bets. So now we're going back to the status mm. quo ante, where DOJ is saying we are going to enforce the law against any actor who is engaging in any online gaming, whether it's sports or casino bets. So, so uh, Mr. Hollifield, I, I guess the coalition, since it's been hopeful of, of the Wire Act restoration, they had a press release ready to go. And, and here's part of the piece that was released upon the DOJ announcement. Uh, here's some of it. Quote, today's landmark action to rightfully restore the Wire Act is a win for parents, children, and other vulnerable populations. And the release uh, lauds, quote, Congress's intent when it gave law enforcement additional tools to shut down the activity through the overwhelmingly passed Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act in 2006. So could you help my audience uh, understand why you believe this was Congress's intent 13 years ago? Well, it's, it was very clear. Um, not allowing um, credit card payments uh, to occur is effectively shutting down the activity. And that's a, um, a nuanced way um, through legislation to make sure that activity doesn't proliferate. And that's exactly what they did. So, Mr. Nuremberg, uh, to be clear, yes, uh, to you and the coalition, it, it's as simple as the fact that the 2006 Act banned businesses from accepting credit cards and other payments in connection with internet uh, betting, and this was in violation of that. Um, yes, well, in effect, by making the statement that DOJ did in 2011, they effectively said they were no longer going to enforce that 2006 law, okay. as long as the casino wasn't accepting sports bets. It effectively overrode a recent act of Congress. So uh, one thing that uh, Robert was talking about with respect to why Congress acted is because the public then and now still strongly opposes internet gaming, even in states where they have large licensed casino industries. Because the public knows that there's a fundamental difference between gaming in a tightly controlled physical facility and gaming on your phone 24-7. Okay. And when we return, if it stands, what does the <clears throat> ruling mean to existing state-regulated online gambling? Let's learn right after this. Planet Hollywood, Paris, Paris, Caesar's Palace. It's one of the most exciting skylines in the world, Las Vegas. Caesar's Entertainment has nearly 50 casinos worldwide, including these. But no matter which casino you visit, we want you to play responsibly. And if you need help setting or keeping a limit, we hope you'll call this number. You see, we know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. I got my own iPod Touch and use my dad's login to get on gambling sites. Poker is the best, but I'm losing a lot. Since I'm too young to play, they're not allowed to keep the money and my dad won't find out. That's right, isn't it? Because of you, I feel not alone in this world. And you let me know that it only takes one person to make you feel wanted. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Just text me after. Okay. <gasps> no! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. 
My name is Sam Leitch. About a year ago, I had a heart transplant. My life was saved on the last day that I was supposed to be on this planet. And now I know what a miracle feels like. I don't know who my donor was, but that person saved my life. Over 130 million people have already signed up and they have one thing in common. They want to save lives. Please sign up to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor. You don't want to miss your chance to save a life. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. And we are back with our closing segment of Eye on Washington. We've enjoyed having as our guest today, Daryl Nuremberg and Robert Hollyfield. They are the counselors to the Coalition to Stop Internet Gambling and the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. Gentlemen, in our, in our few uh, remaining moments together, I want to ask about the impact on uh, the existing online companies in Nevada, in New Jersey, in Delaware. Are, are these gambling industries rendered illegal, assuming the opinion stands? It, yes, it's very simple. Is that if it was an activity that a state did not engage in before 2011, they cannot engage in it now. Okay. Any <laughs> online casino that's up and running, there is no grandfathering. So they're going to, under the federal law, they are illegal and they're advised to shut down. You know, I want to, um, before we leave today, I, I do want to address uh, the, the big counter argument. And I, I want to know, wh what are you, what, what is the coalition to say those who argue that, well, there was no internet when the original act was passed, and, and therefore the, the legislation doesn't pertain to betting online? How, how do you counter that? Well, if I can take a second, is that uh, the internet is a form of interstate telecommunications. DOJ consistently argues that the courts have largely held that. So the uh, law is as stated and the law is interpreted as written. Mr. Hollerfield, um, I, I know that you're thrilled with the ruling, uh, but, but what's next for the coalition in all this? Well, now we go to Congress where the debate should occur in the first place. And we expect that um, those in favor of Internet gambling will take the debate there. Um, just as a forecasting, we know that two of our strongest champions are Senator Graham of the Judiciary Committee Chairmanship and um, Senator Feinstein, the ranking member. So we feel good about the leadership for our position in the Senate, especially it's bipartisan on the House side as well, and we look forward to that debate when it happens. Thanks, both of you, for being here. Thank you for having us. Probably have you again. Great. Maybe, be great. maybe in 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. it for this week's Eye on Washington. We are always here for you, though, keeping Nevadans up on all the top federal matters that matter most to you. You can just go to our website, JoyceCommunications.com. While you're there, check out all the federal issues that impact Nevada. You can like us on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and catch up with any shows you may have missed on our YouTube page. Thanks again for joining us today on Ion Washington. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington, D.C. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Ion Washington with Marilee Joyce. Ion Washington with Marilee Joyce airs statewide in Nevada solely due to the generosity of our sponsors. Can your company help us continue our mission to remain Nevada's top source of federal news? If you can help us help Nevadans, please visit JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW sponsors and join us today. That's JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW sponsors. Thank you.